Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. Now in April of 2022, things started to go sideways. I'm recording all this, move out of my way. Get out of my way, I'm calling law enforcement now. I'm calling law enforcement against you all now. Unsurprisingly, it wasn't long until the Hardys started gaslighting Derek into thinking he owed them. They felt entitled to business decisions. They felt like the home was theirs and he was just living in it. Derek was trying to retrieve business documents out of that drawer there, but they were trying to make it sound like it was their furniture and he wasn't allowed in it. Unshockingly, when Derek called the police for help, they didn't. In fact, the opposite. Now, after this incident with the Hardys, Derek tried to file a stay away order. But in court, the women all said that Derek was the one who attacked them. Even though there was video, who do you think the judge believed? The judge actually flipped the order and Derek was forced to leave his home. Legally, everything is in Derek's name. Wow. We did the story, Mr. Derek Williamson, earlier this week. Many of you are familiar with the story because it has been all over social media. We have Derek on the program today. Derek, good day, welcome to Indisputable, how are you? Hey, doing wonderful, glad to be here, sir, glad to be here. Glad to have you here. Now, there's a lot of content and context inside of this story. And I want you to do the best you can, you can by explaining top to bottom, how did this happen? What was the back and forth? How did they get you out of the property? And where are we today? Absolutely. So yes, sir. So this all started in uh, um, in the year of 2021. Janet Hardy um, has a daughter named Jordan Hardy. Most of you have seen Jordan in the videos that I posted. Uh, but Jordan Hardy actually ended up having an unplanned pregnancy. And uh, thanks, Nerdy Pig and Panda, she's wonderful. But this was just a little bit of misinformation and a very vital element in this case is that uh, Jordan Hardy had an unplanned pregnancy and her father, Jay Hardy or James Hardy, dictated that the child had to be terminated, okay? And uh, Jordan said that she could not do that. I was very close to the family. He said that if you would not terminate the child, then you are not gonna be here, uh, you know? And, and so it, things got crazy. So then they reached out to me because they knew me very well. I was actually helping Jordan because she had, uh, a really tough substance abuse problem and just trying to just uh, give her some good insight and counsel, try to keep her on the right track, try to help her to get out of that. And she, uh, you know, she overcame it. And uh, long story, a lot shorter in reference to that, you know, the I stepped in in order to save the child's life. So that's how we ended up cohabitating together. I allowed them, uh, you know, Janet and uh, Jordan to move on to uh, move in with me on my property in order to get the, get them out of this the the stress and, and things that were going on with, uh, with their father, okay? And so that the child can be delivered. So that's how we initially all started cohabitating together to help them because they didn't have, uh, they said they didn't have anywhere else or anyone that can help them and support them that they're familiar with. Okay, so Who are, let, let me ask you this, who are they? How do you know them? So, so the Hardys, you know, I used I'm the former director of one of the uh, biggest food banks in the city, and they were volunteers. They they you know they helped all the time. They always showed up. They dedicated their time. They gave. They served. They cooked for their people, and uh and just just very very just supportive of the ministry in general, you know. And uh and as time went on, you know, I would begin to notice them, and uh they would help, and uh and people people liked them, and they were just givers in every sense of the way. And then I began to closer with the family because when Jordan was presented to me with the with the issues that she had, in order to step in, you know, Janet said, "Hey, I believe you will be a really good influence in her life. I believe that uh, she respects you, she sees you, she listens to you, and I really need some help with her." And um, so, bottom line is that's how I began to get to know them, just through ministry, you know, just through them serving and helping, and uh, and me thinking that that was the the genuineness of them, right? Yeah, I, I definitely understand that. So you all are connected. You all share a faith, right? Uh, context. They were active in the ministry, the food bank ministry that you were the director over. That's very good work. Um, happy to hear you doing that. Uh, and also uh, with your animal sanctuary. So th this came together, I'm sure, because of your background. It seemed like a perfect fit. Am I right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Uh, when did things go south? So uh, it'd be in 2022, maybe uh, February, okay. that uh, the game changed, okay? Initially, when Janet uh, approached me, she's pretty much told me, hey, you know, God gave me uh, instruction to to bless, the, to bless this ministry, to help. You know, we, I watch you save all these animals' lives. You've helped our family. And I've been, uh, you know, I've inherited a substantial amount of money, and I've been given instruction to invest in the ministry and give a gift to the ministry to help. Um, and so as she gave that, she gave a substantial gift to the ministry where we bought our forever home with me and Janet co bought the property initially together. Um, and because this is a very important because a lot of people have been asking questions about this. So I tried to do my best to do my due diligence and make sure that I never ended up in a situation that I'm in today. Okay. Obviously you guys have heard me mention Nicole Canoy. Nicole Canoy was a former business partner. I learned a lot of tough lessons through her. Lost tens of thousands of dollars, animals. Uh, it was a it was a mess. I chose to walk away from it and leave everything because with all the things going on in Animal Kingdom, I did not want to be on the news or anything for you know you know with a, a, a litigation with that. I walked away to start over, and that's what you know Janet res you know uh, uh, respected that start over. And when she came into my life, she knew that she helped the animals there. She said, you know, you've been through a lot with this facility. You know, all these things happen. I'm going to help you. I've been told to do this. So that's why uh, when we moved forward and Janet approached me and I said, are you sure that you, this is something that you want to do, that you've been led to do? Are you sure that you heard this clearly? She uh, reassured me many, many times that, you know, that was the case. So in preparation for uh, stabilizing the, the ministry and the business, I told her that in order, because I've been burned in the past and by that hellacious encounter with Nicole Kunoy, I said that I have to know, I trust these hands. I don't trust everybody's hands anymore uh, to do what we're supposed to do. The business must, the, the ministry must be on the deed. The deed holder must be uh, the, the, the company because that's very clear who owns the land, who owns the assets, and it belongs to the ministry. So it belongs to the animals. So it was very clear, my name nor her name are, are currently on the deed now. It is my company's name signifying that the animals in the ministry are the true owners of that land. And uh, we made that clear with an immediate deed. We at a closing table, we made sure to make that clear. So if anything ever came up, I did my due diligence. I thought at least that to protect us because the deed was supposed to be clear, you know, and obviously okay. we're gonna get into, it's not. Yeah, well, it, it seems to be clear based on my research, but others cannot clearly say that. And I'm trying to find the disconnect. So when a deed is unclear, it is unclear based on transactional history. So you can literally look at a point in the journey of the deed and say, see, this is where it gets sticky. There's no such point here, am I correct? That is correct, absolutely. Give us the details of what happened when the eviction went forth. You tried to evict, they said, no, you you actually can't evict even though you are basically the deed holder and the entanglement of the judge. Tell us what happened. So that's very interesting, okay? So uh, before, when all this began, you know, it was for to those of you that have seen my TikTok, you know, there's been altercations uh, through several assaults, I have, you know, thousands of dollars of medical bills from leaving my facility, leaving my farm in an ambulance multiple times. Judge Holt, okay? She, uh, refuse for whatever reason. She refuses and refused to honor the deed in place. Okay, she uh, she the first proceeding that I ever went to, uh, she made it clear to me, saying, "You own this in my county, and I not know about it." And she told me, she said, "You are not the, you know, you pretty much you're not the owner, and and Janet is, you know." And she began to say those things at the chief magistrate court judge in court, and not even being a superior court judge having authority to rule on, on that case at all. So bottom line, she moved against me and moved against the company. When I went to her, went to law enforcement for help. So get this, when it comes to eviction, this is this is beyond me. Don't understand it in any sense of the way. I waited a long time. We waited a really, really long time to receive a verdict from the Superior Court. So it'd be, I believe it was November of 2022 that the Honorable Judge Mofford, a Superior Court judge ruled on uh, on this matter. 
And it was clear he denied every, uh, every, um, you know, everything they tried to uh, come against me with to set my deed aside, the claims of what $1.5 million, all these things. He denied them on every front. It was 100% loss on their end, okay? So after having a superior court ruling, right? With my attorneys, we went to uh, file eviction on on the parties, on, on all of the parties that are on uh, my property. So in court, you know, having that superior court ruling, right? Judge Holt refused to acknowledge it. Okay, uh, Janet's attorney uh, said in court that day. She, she, uh, the the attorney said that oh, there's been a, a new uh, filing against you. You know, and uh, Judge Holt's like, oh, really? A new filing has happened, and down here in Morgan County, and uh, and we were made aware, had no clue about this new lawsuit being filed, ain't nothing about it. But I was made aware, my attorney was made aware in court. We had not been properly served or anything like that. But bottom line, Judge Holt refused to acknowledge a superior court ruling and denied me the eviction. And then the next week is when the Hardys and the Canoys will go steal the rest of the animals. Wow. The facility. Okay. All right, a lot of nuance here, okay. Um, The ruling that said you're not able to evict, you need to file uh, this other um, filing. Did you do that? Uh, Because there's been so much litigation and things, my attorneys have said that um, we're just going through the civil matter of of the deed. Because pretty much they're uh, they're giving us such a hard time. And no matter what we file, no matter what we do, no matter what case law is, they're not hearing it. So my attorneys have said, let's just focus on the on the the, the massive case that should cover everything else because they're denying everything on every front. Anything we we try to change venue is denied. We try to uh you know file anything is denied. So we're just trying to go for the big case now. Is what my uh, attorneys are advising. Okay, let me ask you this question. Uh, in the process of this, has anyone from the Judiciary from government, they said, "Hey, man, we we actually know you're right here, um, but this is what's happening to you." Is anybody talked to you off, off record? No, sir. No one's reached out to me uh, at all. You know, so that's why I've been on social media and just trying to tell the story and trying to get help. We need help. As it stands right now, you still are the uh, deed holder. Uh, your organization name is on that deed. Are you able to walk into that home? Absolutely not. I've been uh, kicked off my land from over a year now. And Judge Holt said I'm not allowed on that property, and I the, the so I'm not allowed on it. It's been over a year that you know I had animals out there. All the company property and fencing was out. Everything was out there. It's all company property, and she's made it clear that I'm not allowed on the land. And I've been been kicked off my property for over a year. And people that are not on the deed or in this company. Have been able to have my land and sleep in and sleep there, be there, manipulate, destroy, and steal to this day, and I've been deprived. Is there a, has there been a motion presented to set aside the deed for cause? Uh, there has been a motion. Uh, uh, to my knowledge, there has been a motion filed uh, in the courts recently. Uh, they dismissed the case, and uh, J- Janet and Jay jointly dismissed the case in Rockdale County Superior Court and refiled in Morgan County uh, Superior Court. So now all everything has left Rockdale and has moved directly uh, into Morgan County. So I have not been served the new. Uh, I have not yet been served the new uh, case. But the last time uh, I was advised by counsel. Is that uh, Jay Hardy has, um, you know, has uh, allegedly filed a complaint again against my company, against myself, that has already been ruled on. He's filed it against me again, and then on top of that, Janet uh, Hardy has filed against me as well in the same court. Two different fighting, both of them fighting for the deed. Help me understand jurisdiction. Uh, Rockdale County, Morgan County. What's the jurisdictional connection between the two? Why are they able to go to both counties and file? And that's a little bit interesting, sir. Uh, so, um, county is the initial court that heard this case because Janet and and Jay or James were getting the, getting that quote unquote divorce, 
in Rockdale County. So that was where their petition was put forth. So that gave Rockdale County full jurisdiction in this matter and their and ability to preside. So once that ruling was done in that case, obviously the judge removed me from the case because it, you know our assets, the company had nothing to do with those allegations or with, with what was done. So because they could not win in that court, uh, Janet was the petitioner, okay? Jay was the defendant. So they filed, they swapped it. So now Jay has filed, James has filed as the petitioner in Morgan County. And now Janet is a defendant in Morgan County. So they moved the jurisdiction by swapping the, the by swapping petitioners. And then the reason my the uh and the reason um my 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 the cases, the other cases that I had should have been moved out of uh moved out of Morgan County because the, it was a conflict of interest. Mm. Wow. Wow. All right. Um I do think there's uh, possibly manipulation, like you have suggested, uh, connected to how they're maneuvering. Uh, which, by the way, that's not in good faith, and typically that's a no-no in courts. We call that judge shopping, and typically it is uh, frowned upon. Right? Uh, today, you are not at your property. Litigation is ongoing. What is your attorney saying will probably be the remedy, or what is your hope? My hope is because having a phenomenal counsel, they've been doing a great job. Like they, she's really been doing amazing. But because the judges, okay, are not adhering to case law, to the facts, to these videos, to the evidence, to the medical records, to the deeds, they refuse to acknowledge it. I don't know. I don't. It's like I, that's why we we've come here to see if there can be some accountability to these judges to honor the law. They refuse, and my attorney cannot, and the firms cannot make them act justly in my case. They choose to, uh, you know, I've exposed a lot of the corruption here. They refuse, refuse to do the right thing and honor the case law. Because we're dealing with a property dynamic that may have elements of racial discrimination. Why hasn't your attorney uh, petitioned the federal courts to supply jurisdiction here? So we, based off my understanding and my attorney, uh, she's doing civil defense, okay? So she's pretty much making sure that they, when they're, they're trying to, you know, they've arrested me, they've done all these things, framed me, and she's been defending that and trying to just defend the quote unquote deed itself, even though uh, everything is secure. So she's been focusing all her time, energy, and effort. The firm has been just doing civil defense, and there's keeps on being new cases filed, new charges against me just coming up, and she's just been triaging it and just focusing on. The big things uh, into a civil defense, into another attorney comes in has an ability to hold government, uh, hold governments accountable, and yeah. do civil suits against the parties. If that I definitely, sense. yeah, I definitely understand that because the suits are coming in, she has to be responsive. That's going to take a lot of paperwork, a lot of attention. You got to have another attorney to do the other part. I do highly recommend that part of um, your at least thought process uh, takes it to the federal courts. Uh, I'm not an attorney; I'm just in law school. All right, so I'm not giving you legal <laughs> advice. But definitely, it seems as if it has to get out of this local bubble for there to be an objective review of this case. All right. Um, for those who are watching, you have, uh, do you have a GoFundMe? Yes, sir, we do. All right, give out that information. So the GoFundMe is, uh, if I'm correct, it's help, help Derek stop the Hardys from stealing his farm. All the links are on my TikTok, my Facebook. Uh, TikTok is at Derek. For number four wildlife 007. So the link is there, um, and uh, everybody's able to click on that. But it should say, uh, you know, help uh, help Derek stop the Hardys from stealing his farm. Uh, it should be the GoFundMe. We're going to bring you back for an update. I think things are going to move in the right direction, even if they don't move as fast as they should. Keep us updated on things we need to know, dear brother. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all having me on the show, and thank you for everybody supporting this cause. I appreciate it. I appreciate you.